One of the major issues preventing myself, at least, from going back to this group, I suppose, more often is not even that they're overplayed. It's such a phenomenal bummer just to think about everything expressed in an album like this one, especially being the thoughts on a man's mind shortly before he takes his life. Now, I've heard some quite, perhaps callously, but maybe they have some reason to argue that Kurt was perhaps selfish, not just because he committed suicide. Some people have that opinion. I don't whatsoever, but um, some people would claim that, oh, Kurt was ungrateful for what he had. You know, so many would wish to be in the situation he was in, not just recording artists, but anyone. That Kurt could have rested on his laurels and and lived off the royalties of Smells Like Teen Spirit for the rest of his life. Possibly. The unfortunate tragedy is maybe he wouldn't have been able to had he not passed away. The legend was born via his untimely passing at the age of 27. It's, it's, I'm not far from that age myself. I once heard the comedian Stuart Lee, not in real life in a recording, the comedian Stuart Lee made a morbid joke about how he kind of wishes he could die young and he envies Bill Hicks who was able to solidify his reputation as perhaps the greatest stand-up comedian of his generation, partly because he died young. I think Stuart Lee's making a kind of a mocking joke there, but I think what Stuart Lee's trying to say there is that he does think, he thinks Bill Hicks was a genius, it's just that once someone passes away, the narrative's kind of closed and everyone kind of sees it for what it is rather than what it could have been, and or even plus what it could have been. They see the, the genius plus the potential and they think, oh yeah, he was, a, he was brilliant. Maybe they fill in the gaps a little bit. Maybe they earn points because they didn't have as much time to commit to great works. I think there are individuals out there within the scene that Kurt originated from, that kind of punk world, who would who would make claims that, oh, Kurt, you know, he wasn't truly one of us. If he was one of us, he wouldn't have done something like that. You know, he would have understood that, yeah, life's tough and, you know, you kind of get on with it. You know, it's easy to imagine some of the, some of the straight-edge post-hardcore types taking issue with what Cobain had done. And I, I think there were a few um, people in the media who made comments about about Kurt's passing in a manner that was quite derogatory. I don't know how many recording artists or rock musicians actually did so. There's claims and recordings of Metallica doing so at an instance where they didn't think they were necessarily being recorded. It was a live show, they must have known. And then there's also comments from musicians or uh, music writers. One interesting comment, which I couldn't find a huge amount of verification for, so I don't want to repeat it here. Um, just to give the individual a bit of leeway, you can look it up yourself. I'll, I'll state the comment. I won't state who the commenter was, just for that leeway, you know. A comment that he was no better than a Sid Vicious, a loser. That may have been true of Sid Vicious, who was just image. He didn't write anything of the Sex Pistols songs. He was just this contemptuous piece of garbage who, who seemed to have contempt for anyone who didn't care what other people think of them. How punk rock was that? Sid Vicious was all appearance, and people who were kind of more carefree, he thought that was bad. He was a, he was just a fascist. And to compare Kurt to that is, is just, just incorrect, frankly. I tend to think of this as my favourite of their releases. I think that the the concept here was, at the mo was the most interesting. I think the songwriting was about as strong with, with the clarity of production of, of Nevermind, but what we had was the less songs that were trying to be radio hits and more abrasive, interesting experiments from someone who didn't want to be famous anymore. I find that really, really intriguing. There's a huge gap, impasse, between those who appreciate this group and those who don't, and it has nothing to do with the music itself. Well, it does inevitably, obviously, but it's ultimately downstream of something much more cosmic and philosophic in one's disposition than whether they enjoy the sonics of the of the recording. It's about whether this sort of thing is okay to sing about. Is it okay to sing about this pain and just sell it back to people? It's validating these people's pain, but is it ultimately just just exploiting it? Rather than being a place of solace like a like a say a church or a community center might be, is this huge machine which is operating and profiting the same way that these mindless kind of numbskull groups which Kurt hated like Guns N' Roses and Metallica were. 
I've heard older gentlemen state things like, oh, you, it wasn't right to put your feelings out there that way. You're supposed to bottle it up. You, you know, you're supposed to set a good example and not encourage other people to wallow around in their misery as well. Yeah, the world's a tough place. You're supposed to, you know, get on with it and experience what's good in life. I feel like this... I, I, I get where this attitude is coming from. I, I do. It's, it's coming from a place of... It's not denying there's misery in the world. Although it's just it, it's trying to focus on the positive rather than the negative, and they feel like someone like Kurt Cobain and the romanticization of Kurt is jeopardizing that mission. You know, there might be parents who are terrified that Kurt might be a role model to their kids, for example, and they don't believe in those values. Not necessarily that people ought not to express music, but perhaps they were of a more um, kind of macho, stiff upper lip generation, and they think that this this Kurt generation shtick has really harmed the culture in the long run. I wasn't around beforehand, so I can't really judge the two different... Because in my lifetime, it's always been a... Um, you know, it was always assumed that, yeah, you know, you told people about your feelings, otherwise you might end up like, like Kurt Cobain. I can't help but feel that though that stiff upper lip attitude would have made Kurt feel worse rather than better, for example. And so that there has to be... that there, there has to be a time when we acknowledge that, okay, that mentality isn't making people much happier there has to be some sort of superior equilibrium where and we can potentially acknowledge that um kurt's lifestyle and disposition was not healthy and we don't have to romanticize it whilst whilst validating the pain that he felt and and not chiding him for feeling or expressing that pain in the first place or even or even ultimately succumbing to suicide as he did. It would be one thing if this was just some suicidal poet that no one had ever heard of and people are hearing about it afterward and admiring it for its use of language. What we have here is someone who's adulated as a rock star and people had enough issues with rock stars being the be considered the be-all end-all in the media anyway. But some of the individuals who grew up with rock stars as the be-all end-all in the media, they were like, oh, it's just fantasy, it's not real. And then they had this kind of, and it was something to look up to as a as a totem as is, is this kind of unreal kind of motivational you know exi existence it was something to shoot for it, you knew it wasn't it was like celebrity worship in its own modest and kind of typical way whereas the Kirk Cobain thing I guess people felt as though oh you know he's a it was supposed to be this kind of idealized image his role model like that's not a star blah 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 and and they 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 felt as though oh we can't have kids looking up to to something like that, that's not going to motivate them. However, I think at the end of the day, no matter who you are, I like to think that we can absolutely, absolutely thank Kurt and Nirvana for destroying the era of hair metal and the dominance of groups such as Guns N' Roses. And if you're one of those people who decries Kurt Cobain for that reason, I suspect you're not a very good person in the first place and you don't have an iota of the moral compass that Kurt had and Kurt knew people like you were scum and that's why you hated him. Because he saw through you and you know it. Those from the alternative or punk or hardcore scene who decry Kurt as being kind of a, you know, maybe a shopping mall kind of digestion of, of what you guys stand for. Your movement became a heck of a lot more popular and viable, widespread and influential and your the records were getting reissued that never would have been if it weren't for the the success of groups like Nirvana. You know, if you wanted to see, you know, Sonic Youth on tour, you know, you can thank Nirvana's popularity for Sonic Youth being able to fund tours, for an example. No hardcore scene would have proliferated at all if it didn't have people who had Nirvana as their gateway drug, let's be honest. Nirvana sacrificed being the most credible band in the uh, indie slash hardcore scene in order to give it more life from afar, from a distance. That's how I see it, to be honest. Fuck them, they weren't true members of the scene. Because of them, the scene lives on possibly forever as a result. And he may have had to sacrifice his life in order to do so. Do you think the Melvins or whomever would still, Black Flag even, would still be gigging if it weren't for Dead Kennedys? A lot of these guys don't have the pivotal members in them anymore, to be fair. 
you think any of these groups why as greg sage would still be doing anything you'd be able to see a show of them anywhere who could do um if they ever do a reunion show you think this would ever happen i think someone who's who's passed away since do you think any of this would happen if it weren't for nirvana's prominence you think i'd be able to see the pixies in 2014 if it weren't for nirvana's prevalence in the media discourse no probably not i think they were a net positive and i think if he hadn't ended the way that he had there'd be a lot less people talking about suicide and a lot more suicides not being prevented, I would assume. Rather than kids feeling isolated and alone, there was a rock star who they felt as though, oh wow, he feels what I'm feeling. I guess what I'm feeling isn't so alien after all. Well, maybe if he can convert his, his pain into art, maybe I can do something productive with it as well. Maybe I can learn from his example and try to, try to succeed and try to find fulfillment where he hadn't. That's how I feel personally about my own hero, Mark Fisher, who passed away in early 2017. It disgusts me that so many people have decided that. I think a lot of younger people around my age or older have, have felt a lot of inspiration from Fisher, and they've, and so this kind of harsh, kind of sadistic, psychotic reaction has taken place. Of you know, everyone loves Fisher. The Fisher makes life seem so much more romantic and imaginative and magical than it seems otherwise in the world of the 21st century mundane. And he was as articulate and lucid a speaker and thinker about this topic as anyone. And so as a result, he's been taken up by so many as a bandwagon, but not because they wanted to sound smart, but because he genuinely made one feel as though life was worth living. And so when this kind of memeing and like, oh, um, everyone's obsessed with Mark Fisher, or oh, everyone's just posting Mark Fisher, oh, hey, baby, you want to come my bed, capitalism, uh, it disgusts me. It sincerely disgusts me. I think it's fucking sick, and I, I, I think people ought to be ashamed of themselves. I want to be able to find what Mark was unable. I want to be able to find the equilibrium. It's almost as though my life's purpose is to continue where Fisher left off. There's no reason that someone's passing, even if it was self-inflicted, is a cause to either dismiss that character, to assume that those inspired by that character will suffer a similar fate, and that they won't be... Um, feel any less empowered by the contributions that they made in their lifetime. They might see a figure like Cobain or Fisher now and think it's just an individual suicidal or say someone who follows their work and they assume that they follow their work and they're a fan of their work because oh it's just suicidal ideation. They make it they make this kind of depressive archetype appear romantic and and sexy and cool and validated. Actually it makes people feel as though if these people I find so inspiring felt that way, maybe I can ch engage and channel some of that, and maybe I can uh, look at them from the outside and kind of see what they had and appreciate what they had more so than unfortunately they could and use their example to go forth as they would probably want me to. No, a death by suicide does not at all remotely make someone any less valid to look up to. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, the debate over Nirvana is a debate over the efficacy of suicide. Not caring for the music is simply not caring for the music. You might think the Pixies did it better, you might think dozens of groups did it better before Nirvana did, and you just kind of shrug your shoulders and think, ah, oh, they were just the more accessible of the groups and they're a bit too accessible, hooky for me. Yeah, whatever. And you think it's sad that he committed suicide. You might think, ah, oh, you know, a lot of my musical heroes committed suicide, like Ian Curtis and Wendy O and, you know, Nick Drake. And you might see Cobain as just another unfortunate casualty in the world. And then there are those who have a more disdainful opinion of Nirvana. They can't just ignore it. They see it all and they think, I have to disdain it, I have to go out of my way to disdain it. I sincerely suspect that this comes from a place of disliking those who have committed suicide. They think it's an, a selfish act. I'm not going to try and change your mind because I understand that it's more of an ideological position with, with you people because I think this whole... Because you're acting all like hyperlogical, but then you don't seem to understand why, why, why someone would want to commit suicide when actually there's many logical reasons one would and many logical reasons wherein one wouldn't. One argument I will just kindly and politely if, if possible debunk about the whole oh I think suicide is selfish thing. These people argue oh we're coming from a place of compassion about the loved ones of the people who committed suicide. That's not th that way of arguing arguing that the person who committed suicide is a bad person and that their loved ones will suffer like saying that in public 
knowing or with the possibility that their loved ones might hear. But don't pretend it's coming from a place of compassion. It's coming from a place of seeking pleasure at bringing down the happiness of others or the love that someone has for another who may have passed away from suicide because you're bitter and jealous that they're going to get attention that you never will. You're bitter that they penetrated very tragically a veneer of of kind of stability which you've been trying so difficult so hard with such great difficulty to maintain and they're being kind of celebrated and romanticized in a way for having for having broken that that kind of barrier that kind of public barrier you know the stiff upper lip they've let it slip and you hate them for it because you're bitter about that oh i just care about their loved ones and the selfish act they committed by leaving their loved ones yeah, hey, loved ones, he was a piece of shit for having left you. Yeah, how compassionate, how compassionate you. You're coming from a place of absolute warmth and care, aren't you? But that all being said, don't romanticize suicide. Do not seek solace in death. Life is always better than death, I promise you. Help is out there. Never give up. Because one day you might need to save someone else from a similar fate that you're considering. Think about that. And if your emotional pain is caused by the expectations of others, tell those others to go to hell, sincerely. Your pain is not worth it at any point. If you feel sad that the thing that makes you want to live life is frowned upon and you think that, oh, I can't live my life happily doing that because there's people who are going to be berating me for doing that. Why would you... Those people are berating you because they're bitter and just like they could live their lives without paying any attention to what you're doing but if they're going out of their way to attack you it sincerely is because they're bitter that you're you've chosen you've braved it and decided to do what you want and they haven't i'm telling you now that's it anyone who is trying to enable your misery is doing so for, so they can enable their own happiness they're a hypocrite anyone trying to chide you for seeking pleasure and love in life is only doing so for the sake of, guess what? Fucking pleasure. They would not do so if it was not pleasurable for them. I promise you that. Anyone who tells you what you should be doing is doing whatever they want. I promise you that. That's the dirty little secret of this world, by the way.